Good morning, everyone. My name is Muzammar al uh, Welcome back. Today, we have a very special guest, somebody very close to my heart, somebody who I've looked up to in my DVM years. And uh, so I have the gratitude to present to you Dr. Raja. So Dr. Raja here, he is talking live to us from Vietnam, where he is uh, working at the feed mill. So Dr. Raja, why don't you introduce yourself but tell us a little bit about your background, where you're from, and where you grew up. Okay. Um. Hi, everyone. So just like uh, how uh, Muzamal explained us now. So my name is Raja. Uh, I'm 25. I grew up in a place called Sentul. It's a small area in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So from there, then I studied in a high school known as La Salle Sentul, which is basically the school in that same area. So from there, I moved on to doing my pre-university in a place known as matriculation, matriculation in another state in Malaysia. That was about 10 months. So once I finished that, then I went on to doing my veterinary degree in UPM, which is where I met Muzamal there. We studied together for five years and then graduated uh, last year in November and then I took my first job on in November right after graduation in Vietnam under a feed meal company so basically what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is be, uh, to make sure that the feed that we are producing is up to standard and quality for the livestock animals so we cover the poultry species, which is uh, layer chickens, broiler chickens. We cover ducks as well, uh, cows, goats, and sheep. Uh, we cover uh, pork, pigs. We cover uh, fish as well. Okay, and so let's, frogs. Let's, yeah. let's slow down a little bit and talk a little bit more about your pre-degree life. So how did you choose to become a veterinarian? And what kind of subjects did you take in your high school, for you to be able to graduate or be able to apply for a vet school? So basically why I chose a, a veterinary degree or chose to do veterinary medicine is frankly because I had uh, interest in animals and because I came from a background of having many uh, relatives who were, med uh, who were medical doctors. So seeing them work in that field, I, I personally thought, why were there no one working with the animals in that sense? So therefore, that from there, my interest grew to help animals in the same level that I saw my relatives helping people. So in terms of studying uh, prim uh, pr uh, primary school, which is 7 to 12 years old, is the standard Malaysian education. And then um, 13 to 15 is still the standard education as well. But in Malaysia, once you reach 15 and then you pass an exam, you are, you, you are given a choice to choose between uh, two different parts or types of studies, whereby one gives you uh, physics, bio, and chemistry, which allows you to set yourself up for those uh, degrees which require physics, bio, and chemistry, which includes uh, medical, medical doctors, veterinary doctors, engineers, and so on. Whereas the other one is more tailored for you to become an uh, architect, uh, econs major in that sense. So once I did the exam when I was 15, I chose the uh, physics, bio and chemistry part. So therefore I did that from, four, from 16 to 17. And 17 in Malaysia, we have this one major exam where everyone needs to do it. So once you pass the major exam, then using that exam's results, you will be able to apply to your pre-university and so on and so forth. Whereby following the same path, I also take physics, bio and chemistry in my pre-U, which allowed me to apply for a degree in UPM. So it's basically you need to take any path which gives you physics, bio and chemistry in order for you to get that placement in UPM. Uh, so let's talk about some students who might be in their high school now and they want to get into veterinary medicine. So do you think it's an easy path for them to take or it's, it requires a lot of hard work, dedication, or is it something that with the right interest, you can get into it very easily? I mean, honestly, 
anything, no matter how difficult it may seem to someone, if you have the passion to do it or the passion to want to become that person or that or to have that career, anything is possible. So as long as you put in the hard work needed, anyone can take the path which I took or even can take a better path which I took, better than what I took in order to get to where I am or even more than what I am right now. So, yeah. And that's mm. great. So let's talk about your degree. You said you studied a DVM degree, which is a five-year degree. So yep. what content do you study in the degree? How was it? How was the university life for you uh, when you were studying with this degree? And also, how was the content? Was it mostly theory or was it practical and theory both mixed together? Well, okay, so starting, it's five years. So in that five years, we cover everything in in a way whereby we start from the smallest thing and from there, we study more and more wider and bigger. So to give you a, an, easy, an easy example, we basically start with maybe studying about the cells and what the cells do. Then from there, we move on to studying about the organs and then uh, we move up to studying the systems, the anatomy, the physio, how all it works. Mm -hmm. From there, we move on to the medicine, the pharmacology. Then from there, the diseases. And then the last couple of years is how to incorporate all of that in one process. So that's basically, in a nutshell, what is happening in the five years. But if you ask me my experience in the five years, as time went on, it got tougher and tougher. I believe it is that because it also helps us to prepare on what we would face once we move on to be actual full-fledged veterinary doctors because we don't have training wheels or people to supervise us once we are in the field. So I guess the increasing level of difficulty is to help us prepare what we were supposed to face when we start working. Mm -hmm. That's good. So you're telling me that the course really gives you a thorough work through of what work life will be once you graduated yes in a sense but it doesn't cover the work life in every field like like when we're doctors we cover a vast field of animals the degree which i took in upm tends to favor or uh, tends to prepare you more when you are if you are interested in working with small animals, which means you're interested in working with cats and dogs commonly. If your choice is more on the farm animals or exotics or fish or poultry, they don't really give you a real life experience on how it actually is in the field at that moment. So all these other fields, all we have is just the experiences and stories and theories which our lecturers explain to us. So we just have a basic foundation or blueprint of how the field would be outside, but we don't know actually how much it has advanced or how much it has changed at that moment. Yeah. Mm, that's a really interesting take on how you described it. So now let's talk about how did you find this place where you're currently working in? And was it easy going from being a veterinary student to working full-time as a veterinarian uh, where are you working currently? Okay, so how I came across this company is basically when I was preparing for my final exam in, in our final year, um, through the word of mouth from someone in my company right now, contacted or communicated with one of my professors in the university. And then he communicated to a group of us to see who was interested to meet with my current company. So I was one of those people and therefore I went to uh, somewhat like a casual meet with them to, to, to get to know what this company is about. And I found them to be interesting. I felt it could be a change, therefore I applied. And then they found me to be valuable enough so therefore they accepted me and therefore this is my first job at the moment mm. sorry what was the second question again just now so my second question was was it difficult going from being a full-time veterinary student and then going into 
work and working as a full-time veterinarian? Was it was there a drastic change? How did you settle and how did you come about all the changes? Okay, so in terms of the transition from a student to a full work full-time vet, I would say maybe the first one to two months I was somewhat uh not sure of myself maybe self-doubt like it is what i'm doing or is my advice for this animal or for this case is right because back in student times you always had your professor to confirm whether your thought process is right at the moment but once i moved on to working i did not have that added benefit so the first one to two months was a lot of self-doubt whereby any advice or comment they would ask me, I could not give it directly. So I always would have to refer back to my books or my notes to confirm if my thought process was right. But once I got the confidence that, okay, what I'm thinking and what I'm doing is right, therefore I, I was uh, less nervous and more confident with my answers and my thought process. So maybe after the first two months, I got the hang of it and it became more smoother as time went on. Basically, you need time for you to believe in yourself that what you are saying is right. Mm. Basically, what you're saying is it took a little bit of time after you graduated to build up your confidence and build up your skills in what you're working in to really be able to adjust to the new environment. So it took you about one to two months, you said. Yes, correct. Without uh, doubting if what I'm saying is right or wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how is the work life on a daily basis? Let's say you're going to work in the morning and you come back at night. What does the day consist for you? So let's say you run us through the day from morning till evening. How does it look like? Okay, so my day is somewhat standard. I work a uh, eight to five job, whereby my day starts with the lab, basically, because I'm a farm vet, but I don't spend 100% of my time in the farms looking at the animals. So I spend almost 70 to 80% of my time in the lab, making sure that the feed that we are producing, the pellets which we are producing, are up to the quality and the standards that are required for the animal to reach or for the animal to grow accordingly for it to be harvested. I spend the remaining 20% of my time in the day is uh, advising farmers or giving my input on cases from other vets that are in the same company, basically like a discussion type of thing. Uh, if it's not that, it's basically me visiting the farm directly and seeing what's the actual issue going on, collecting samples and testing and trying to come to a diagnosis. And once we have confirmed what's going on and then to advise the farmer what is the next best course of action to come out of that issue. Yeah. Okay, so looking forward, what you're working as now, how do you see yourself uh, going on in the next couple of years? Do you plan on staying with this company for a while or do you want to continue working as uh, another type of veterinarian, for example? Okay, so... Where I see myself in the next couple of years is basically finishing up my contract with this company and then moving on to a different field or different aspect of veterinary medicine. Because the company which I'm working with right now gives me a supplement of knowledge which helps boost up my overall input in handling livestock animals. So I believe this is very beneficial to me. So therefore, I'm, I'm accumulating experience and knowledge in that sense. But once I have done so, I would like to move on to the next part, which is I am planning to continue studying to finish up my PhD and so on in livestock medicine. So it's something in that field. Yeah. So it's all supplementing to one point, which is me completing my PhD. That's, that's my main goal for the next couple of years. Well, we wish you all the best for your PhD. I hope you do it easily and I hope it comes with great uh, blessings as well. So let's end the, the, the interview with just some advice you would have for the youngsters who are trying to get into vet schools or the youngsters who are about to graduate soon from vet school. 
what advice would you have for them? Okay, so the first advice for youngsters who are trying to get into vet school is basically you may come across a lot of people who say it's not much of a field, you wouldn't make much of money and so on and so forth, or people may disapprove of your selection as a of, of this career. Well, it doesn't really matter what people say because as long as you believe that you love the job, that you love working with animals, then you should do it. Because if your passion is for animals, then you shouldn't look at what you make from it. You know? So just believe your passion and put the hard work into it. I believe you'll be able to get into the degree. Mm -hmm. And for people who are about to graduate, it may seem daunting to you that you're moving on to the next phase of life. Everyone will be afraid. But believe me, once you move on to it, it's not as bad as you think it is. You need to give yourself some time to get used to the new environment, get your footing. And then it's just like how you entered university. Your first couple of months, you may, you were maybe afraid, not sure if you'll be able to do it. But you look at yourself, you really reached final year. It's something like that. When you move on to work life, maybe the first couple of months, you may feel afraid just like how you were. But give yourself time and pretty sure you'll be able to start working and then it'll be smooth sailing from there. Okay, well, thank you so much, Raja, for coming on and letting people know about your job and how you got there. Well, we'd like to end by saying that if anyone have a question for Raja, I can give you the details on the comments below and you can contact him if you want. Right, Raja? Yeah, sure, definitely. No problem. And, and uh, if you have any questions and what you want us to talk about in the next uh, few interviews, anyone, any careers that you're particularly interested in, that you want to learn more about, do let us know and I'll I'll try and find the people for it. Uh, once again, thank you so much, Raja, for coming. No problem. Thanks. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. And uh, hope you have a great day ahead and see you next time. You too. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the chance to speak.